Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, your lovely, lovely faces, to a brand new video here on the channel. And, ladies and gentlemen, we have some good news. You know what? We've all been asking for it, and we've kind of gotten the wish. Mera is gone. So, with this, as you can see, though, it does say, sadly, so are the others. And we're going to read an article now, which is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. And it kind of sucks because a lot of things that we're not going to see anymore is going through this transitional period currently at DC Comics. And as you know, I am a huge comic book fan, a huge comic book movie fan as well. And I'm just happy that she's gone. You know, it's sad to see all these other people are going, but to get her to go, it's like, right, okay then. And we potentially got better things coming down the pipeline. So, as you can see with this, so call it DC Rebirth or DC Genesis, maybe call it Identity Crisis or Flashpoint. These titles are past DC comic event series aptly describe the state of Warner Brothers DC movies, which are on the cusp of a new era, but not before a potentially messy transition period. Interesting. The duo in recent days, so um, that obviously we have James Gunn and Saffron. They recently flew back to LA from Aspen, Colorado, where they were huddled in deep planning and have a DC Bible in hand, or at least a working blueprint. Gunn and Saffron are expected to meet next week with David Zaslav, the Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, who is radically reshaping the media company, and who hired the duo in October to lead a newly launched film and TV division. The pair will unveil to Zaslav a plan that is expected to lay out their vision, although much of their plan, which insiders paint, is still in a work in progress, and one that is yet to be approved, they gotta see him next week, remember, is being kept under wraps. Details of several possible paths are trickling out, and we have one which has been shown. Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman 3, is not moving forward, and is now considered dead in its current incarnation. Sources say that Jenkins submitted a treatment and that James Gunn, Peter Safran, as well as Warner Brothers Pictures co-chairs, they broke the news to the filmmaker telling her the project as it stood. Does not fit in with the new plans. While costs are not a factor, insiders have said that DC Studios will not have an overburden some financial restrictions, that the studio could end up saving tens of millions of dollars by not making Wonder Woman 3. Gal Gadot, according to sources, was on track for a $20 million payday, and P Patty Jenkins would have received $12 million. So straight away, $32 million they're saving just by not having the same director and the same actress play uh, Wonder Woman. Which kind of sucks, because I really, really enjoyed Wonder Woman, the first one, which the time frame of being in World War I and just everything about the film, the setting, the look... It was a really, really great movie. But then, obviously, Wonder Woman 84 kind of just went, uh, yeah, what are you doing? You know, it's almost like she was trying to, well, we're in the 80s, you know, all this vibe, and we're, we're trying to stay with it. Well, at that time, it wasn't really like that. You know, in the 80s, for comics anyway, it was all gritty, it was graphic, it was down and dirty, you know? That's when you had, you know, the killing joke. It's when you had the Dark Knight Returns, you had all these Daredevil born again. There was so many amazing comics that came out in the 80s. Lobo, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And there's just so many great things that came out. Maybe they should have set it in the 60s. That would have gone with the Batman and Robin TV series of that uh, era, the way it looked and the way exactly how Wonder Woman 84 looked. But yeah, They've said that Wonder Woman 3 is dead in the water at the moment. But we do have more. The first which builds on the shuttering of Jenkins' as Wonder Woman 3 is the closing curtain of the Snyderverse, and the heroes cast by filmmaker Zack Snyder for his Justice League. The one sees the shutting down of Man of Steel 2, with a returning Henry Cavill, the best Superman, and having no more Aquaman fronted by Jason Momoa. Now... That's where Amber comes in. She's no longer going to be picked up for Aquaman 3 because they are not making Aquaman 3. This just goes to show what is going on and how they actually think of what's going on in DC. 
literally, sadly, to get rid of one person, all the others have to go. Even though, obviously, you know, they're all going anywhere, that makes any sense. But for people like us, who we've wanted to see her go, you know, because of what she has done, and especially when DC president, or ex-DC president, Walter Hamada, when he goes, yeah, she had no uh, chemistry with this leading actor. We had to work extremely hard in post-production to make it resemble something of a love uh, love romance, which I thought was absolutely hysterical. Because there's her, oh, we had everything, we were just so good together. Yeah, that's why the production team didn't, uh, didn't think so, and that's why the president even said that you were shit, you know? That's how I think it's absolutely hysterical. But as you can see though as well, you do have Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill and Jason Momoa showing up in the Flash film, which is coming out on June 16th, but they are only cameoing. So, to get rid of her, like I said, we've had to get rid of all the others, which it kind of sucks, you know, because again, we're all like, you know what, Jason Momoa, everyone loves Jason, you know, because he does seem to be like a cool, cool guy, just have fun, sitting around, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And in the last hour, some more news has come out regarding Jason Momoa. And this is very interesting now because it seems to be that Jason Momoa is the only person who is currently in the iteration of the DC characters. So as Aquaman, as Arthur Fleck, uh, he is... Sorry, Arthur, not Arthur Fleck. Arthur Fleck is the Joker, Arthur Curry. Is that Jason Momoa is going to be recast as Lobo. Now... Lobo was invented in the 80s, and Lobo, as you can see by there, he's a pretty mean-looking son of a gun. And what it is, we have Lobo by here. So, Lobo is an intergalactic bounty hunter, and he swears, he drinks, he messes around with women and everything else, and he's basically like scum of the universe as well. So, they want him as Lobo, which I am all for. And another thing which I thought was actually really interesting to see, so, is with this, it goes on to say that he may be the last, you know, Aquaman 2 may be the last time we see him in the role because he's said to be recast as a Lobo. And what it goes on with is we have this by here. So, for his uh, new film, Slumberland, which is out on Netflix, which, to be honest with you, it's not a bad movie, actually. It's quite funny. It's quite... Uh, it's quite uh, interesting to watch, and it's got some nice scenes in it. But this is currently what they had to say. You mentioned your dream with James Gunn and Peter Safran. I saw James post Lobo. Are those two? Did things? he really? He posted a photo of Show Lobo. Me. He posted a photo of Lobo on Mastodon to say, "I'm on this app too," with a, a tease of Lobo. Are, huh. Is your statement and his post connected at all? Huh. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, everyone knows I'm a comic book fan, and so the comic that I collect the most, and I have every comic there is, you can do your research and find out what it is. Jason Momoa is a huge Lobo fan, and he does. He goes on about it so much. On his social media, he has posts about it. He's even gone as him as Halloween one time. Jason Momoa as Lobo would be the ultimate casting, I'm telling you right now. Because Jason Momoa, he just brings everything to that role, which is exactly what it needs. But it's just so good to see that they are going to be keeping him, but she's going to be gone. You know, which, like I said, it's just absolutely amazing to see that she is going to be gone. And it sucks because everyone else has to go, but... I think we can take this as a win, even if she is in the new Aquaman film, I'm not going to be watching in the cinemas. You know, if there's other means of acquiring that film, I will probably watch it that way, because I'm not giving him, and not getting him a penny for it. And another thing as well, which we did learn a couple of weeks ago, is that, uh, well, they've agreed to a contract. They've agreed for her to be in Aquaman 2. But she's under the screen time of where she gets no residuals. She gets absolutely nothing. All she got was a flat fee of $2 million, which is what she said. And that is it. Now, another huge thing with this. She cannot say Johnny Depp lost me Aquaman. Because she's still in it. And James Gunn is rejigging the entire thing. 
and they just going to get rid of her that way. So she can no longer say that Johnny Depp cost her Aquaman role, which I think is absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates, and I will see each and every one of you soon. Bye-bye, folks.